I want to show you something because many of you all, many of you all go to church and you don't understand that church is not just the place where you get a word and you, you know, shout and dance and you feel better about your life. Amen. Church is the place where you sign up. Say amen. To go through the school of obedience. To be, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now listen, y'all. I'm going to help you now. I cannot teach you obedience. That's something that, 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 that's something that trials and suffering teaches you obedience. I can't teach that. What I can teach, I can give you keys. Say amen. I can give you some understanding, but I can't teach it. Amen. You'll never learn it unless you go through your own set of circumstances. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So after you got saved, the goal of the Lord is to start causing you to learn to be obedient. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Now, uh, look at Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, though he were a son, talking about Jesus, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Learned obedience. Wasn't automatic. Now, this is talking about Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord, had to learn obedience. Come on, y'all. He had to learn it. So how is it that we get saved six months and we got it? Say, man, we get saved a year and we got it. We get five years and we think we got it when the Bible says that our own Lord, you know, the one walk on water, the, the one that the eyes come open. When Come on. But, 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 but he had to learn obedience. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? What did Christ have to learn? Not to do his own will. He had all power but had to submit that power to the Father not to do his will. He was saying, I'm here to do the will of the one that has sent me. So it wouldn't, because he's, he, he, his, his obedience was so great because his power was so great. It's one thing to be obedient when you're in the prison cell. It's another thing to be as free as a bird and, have, and, could, and could command things to happen and yet not do it. Come on, I'm trying to teach y'all. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So many people look for that, 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 that wide open spaces. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They look for that free place and they never grow in God because God's going to put them in a hard place. Say amen. To cause them to learn how to suffer, how to not do what they want to do. Now listen, why is it that we keep repeating the same foolish cycles? Because we haven't learned obedience. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to get there. Are y'all there? Let me show you something. It, uh, it says, for this reason, uh, 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 this is my own notes. This is the reason that God said not to promote a novice. You know when the Bible says don't, don't, don't promote a novice, a person who hasn't been through anything? Now you say, why? Because he has not had time to suffer. He's flying on salvation high. Come on. He's happy to be saved. He ain't had to endure no persecution. He ain't went through when somebody come against him for being a Christian. Say amen. He ain't had no strange and fiery trials show up to attack him. He's just happy to be. He's just living off the residue, the fumes of being saved. Come on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Therefore, that man has not developed Christian character because his character is developed by suffering. That's why I don't listen to people who ain't been through nothing. I don't listen to novices because I know you don't know. You. Today you say that. But you go through some trials and you'll, you'll understand why I said what I say. Say amen. You understand why we do what we do because trials is what I'll I, I, I show you. Are y'all there? He will listen. He will be proud because he has not endured the tenderizing of hardship. Oh, that's a good word. That was in my own notes. He has not endured the tenderizing. That's what suffering do to you, tenderize you. You want to know why people overcome sin, stop sinning? Because they, they keep sinning and then the judgment hit them and they go through something so hard and so difficult that they get broken. Y'all ain't hearing me. They get broken, and all of a sudden, because of the brokenness, because of the suffering, that heart becomes soft enough to yield. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? See, without that right there, they'll keep on doing what they're doing. They're not, they're not ready yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? 
So many of you all have grown. You think you've grown because you've been in church a while. That's not why you grow. Because people have been in church 20, 30 years, still childish. That's not why you grow. You grow because you have gone through some hardships. Those hardships have delivered you. Are y'all, y'all, do y'all want me to show y'all something? Can I show y'all a little something? Y'all ready? You know, it's, it's a, you know, some people that have battled pornography, say amen. You know, they will keep battling pornography until pornography leads them into so, until they get so out of control that they become afraid at how perverted they have gotten. Till they start getting scared when they have, when they have these fears, when they start to lust children and, y'all don't want to talk about this. That fear hit them when they think, well, I'm a, when they ready to go out here and just have strings, they go get a prostitute or a whore. Y'all want to talk. Y'all want to talk. They got, they got afraid because they went out here because the lust has drove them to go have sex and then they scared they might have AIDS. See, the, y'all don't want to talk. That hardship, that fear is tenderizing them to make them remember. Say amen. Making them remember. Some things you won't do because you remember. Like, oh, no, I remember how that felt. I remember sitting there waiting on that age test. And so if a person hasn't had the time, if a person hasn't had time to suffer, then they're not going to, then then their heart would never become soft enough for God to really impress upon them or really to speak to them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what is God teaching us? Come on. Obedience. Amen. It's obedience. That's what it's about. He's teaching us to learn to obey. Are y'all there? Now, okay, turn over here to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let me give you a little bit of, I have some more notes on that, on Hebrews 5 and 8. Uh, The suffering softens your heart and causes you to become teachable. Are y'all there? One of the worst people to teach you is a person who has never sat where you sat. They are going to be the most judgmental person on earth because they don't know how it feels. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You find those people in every church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That will see somebody come in and just, I don't know why, but I don't know. Listen, come on, y'all ready? Why? Come on. Y'all, why is she putting up with him? Why, 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 why is she? Now, see, they ain't never been through this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, you ought to just get off that crack. Why you just, you just, they ain't never been through this. They can't tell you how this thing is calling you. They have no idea. They ain't sat where you sat. They are the most judgment of, they have not been softened through hardship. Oh, matter of fact, hardship is what makes you begin to sense the pain of others. The Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion. He sensed the pain of others. And that, that, that compassion is what allowed him to know the father wanted him to do work there. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm trying to say. Are y'all there? The, come on, the Bible, are y'all ready? The Bible says the woman that had an issue of blood came up behind him, touched him. Virtue went out. Say amen. He felt something go out. Immediately he knew, I got, so I got, got to do work. Y'all ready? The Bible says blind Bartimaeus, son of the man, sat by the highway side begging. When he saw, heard Christ come, he started crying out, uh, uh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says he was moved with compassion. That's how he knew miracle time. Why? Because I sense the compassion. Why? Because I'm learning, I'm learning how he feels because I'm going through some suffering myself. A person who has never went through anything ain't good for nothing but judging. Say amen. But are y'all there? So this is the reason why uh, I've told you all why God says don't promote a novice. Don't promote somebody who has just got saved or hasn't been walking with him long because they ain't got nothing but pride. Say amen. I was like that. I, I, I will admit when I got saved, oh, I was anointed. Boy, I could preach up the storm. Say amen. I could tell you what you was doing wrong. Tell everybody what they were doing wrong. Say amen. See something like that preach ain't no God. Oh, I was, I'd wear you out. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Had no idea of the pressure that that man of God was under. Had no idea of the pressure that sister was under. Say amen. Had no idea what they were going through at home while I'm judging their marriage. Say amen. So the Lord said, oh, so you want to be in my place. Let me switch places. I'm going to let you switch places with them for a little while and show you what they were going through. 
And guess what? You start hollering out mercy. You start crying out for mercy when you start go send yourself in that situation. Say amen. Okay, let me let me get done. Look at the first Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, verse eleven. Now, let me give you a little bit more. Now, remember that Hebrews 5 and 8 said that the son, Christ, learned obedience through the things he suffered. He learned obedience. What taught him obedience? Suffering. So suffering is the schoolmaster. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If, if Christ learned obedience through suffering, then suffering must be the teacher. Say amen. Because without suffering, he would have never learned obedience. Are y'all there? Let me show you something. Now, uh, suffering, let me give you a little definition. Suffering means to allow. You know, the Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence takes it by force. It says the kingdom of God allows, allows violence. Are y'all heard? Yields to violence. Talking about spiritual violence. Are y'all there? So suffering means to yield. Or a better word is to hold your peace. You know, somebody do something to you, and you learn to hold your peace. Are y'all there? Now look at this. 1 Peter 1 and 11 says, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. Okay, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. So that means that the sufferings are always followed by glory. Are y'all there? Ashes are always followed by beauty. Hardships are followed by breakthrough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Let me give you one more. Turn over here to Hebrews chapter 2. Let me give you one more. So what's the goal? Obedience. Now, I'm going to read this out of Amplified Version because it breaks it down a little bit better. Amen? I just like how sometimes it's a little, little bit more breakdown. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Y'all there? Say amen when you're there. It says, for it, was, for it was an act worthy of God and fitting. Now, I'm at the Amplified now. For it was an act worthy of God and fitting to the divine nature that he for whose sake and by whom all things have their existence in bringing many sons into glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect, should bring to maturity the human experience necessary to be perfectly equipped for the high office, for his office of high priest through suffering. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? It, let, let me show you the part of verse. It says, should bring to maturity the human experience necessary to be perfectly equipped. So, so, so in our human existence, there is something that perfectly equips us to be carriers of that anointing, the power, the glory of God. What is it? It's suffering. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let me go over to Philippians chapter 3 real quick. Let me get done. Philippians chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 10. Y'all there? Come on, 3 and 10. Because this is, this is a hard lesson to teach new Christians. Not even new Christians, but the modern Christian, the new age Christians. Amen. Because they are on blessing, but no suffering. They only know grace. Amen. They, they, they don't understand anything, but, but, but God be good to me. They don't understand that God is trying to teach you to be good to him. The same God that's at the same God you're asking for for his blessings, that's the same God asking for your life. The same God you asking for his prosperity is the same God saying, Give me your tongue. Say amen. The same God you said, Give me a good marriage, he said, Give me your attitude. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We have never been taught the reciprocating. The, the reciprocal relationship with God that when we ask, he asks. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. When we ask, he asks. It's not a one-way street with God. People say salvation is free. It's not free. When you, ask, when you ask to be forgiven, he asks you now present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. So in order to get his salvation, I got to give him my life. That's a trade. 
Is that free? Because, see, we think it's free. That's why we get what he got and keep on doing what we're doing. Because we didn't know. Now, he was trading me, my life for his life. My disobedience for his obedience. My unrighteousness for his righteousness. My old dirty name for his good name. Say amen. Are y'all there? Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Good stuff. Y'all know that's the good part. Thank God rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Say amen. Because he rose from the dead, we saved. Y'all there. Sit on the right hand and Father may ever make an intercession for us. Amen. Ain't that a good part? Because he rose, that's where the glory and the power and the anointing come from. Say amen. But Paul says, he goes on to say, and, and I got to know him in the resurrection power, but then I got to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Now, I taught y'all this a little, bit, a little bit on this, but I want to reiterate this for all of you all who think walking with Christ is just skating in the park. He says, you're going to have to get acquainted. Listen, what, now, now, your next question would have been, what is his suffering? Because if I'm going to have to fellowship with it, I don't need to know what is it. So that when, it, so when that stuff shows up, I can recognize this ain't the devil. Y'all ain't hearing me. This is, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So let's see what his suffering is. He was rejected. Oh, so you mean when rejection shows up, I'm learning, I'm fellowshipping, I'm learning how to get acquainted. He was lied upon. He was talked about. He was mistreated. Say amen. What, 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 what am I learning? I'm learning Christ. I'm fellowshipping with that. Fellowship means just like when you sit down and eat. That's what it means. Sit down and break bread. You know, you know people better when you break bread with them. When you sit down with them, you're going to know because, you know, once we get eating, talking, the real them going to come out. Say amen. So when you sit down with people and you begin to break bread, you start fellowshipping, y'all become acquainted. Well, see, you think that it's all about getting acquainted with them blessings. That's only one side. That's why people don't live right. Because when the fellowship of the suffering show up, why they picking on me? Why they saying that about me? Why they, come on. Because they are novice and they ain't been saved long enough to know how you grow through suffering. They want everybody to say good things and pat them on the back and say, oh, you just, oh, you just smell so great. But the suffering of God is what calls you to mature. The suffering is where you get the power of God. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Are y'all there? So that's the reason why I told y'all don't listen to people who ain't suffering. Say amen. And I'm talking about I got to see a life where you've gone through something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I ain't talking about going through something because of your sin. See, the Bible says that you don't, we shouldn't suffer as a sinner. Because that means we're just reaping what we sow. Real suffering is when you're living right. Not where your seeds are coming up from what you sow. Say amen. When, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so when you begin to, when you start suffering for righteous sake, that's when you under, starting to understand Christ. Are y'all there? Because it's easy to, to hit somebody back to hit you. It's one thing that lets them out hit you and not do nothing. Oh, what great suffering that is. The, it, it ain't the pain of the lick. It's, the, it's my flesh having to yield. Y'all ain't hearing me. It's my flesh not, trying, not getting in the flesh, not destroying you like my mind. Y'all don't want to talk. Like my old nature would do. But having to yield to the spirit. Y'all ain't hearing me. Are y'all there? Can we keep going a little bit? Okay. Let me, let me give you one more. Go to Romans 8. Romans 8. We're going to look at verse 18. Come on, real quick, because we got to close quick so y'all can get y'all greens on. Throw you some turkey wings in there. Don't, don't, don't throw no fat in there. Say amen. Get you some smoked turkey wings. Are right, y'all there? Let's go. We got to change the slave food. The slave food now. We got to stop it. 
Say amen. Okay, let's go. Let's go to verse, uh, y'all at, at Romans 8, 18. It says, uh, uh, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, see what you're going through right now, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The word glory means weight. That's another word for the anointing, the power of God. Let me, let me give you a better definition. The shine of God. When people, y'all ain't want to hear me. See, you see, see, when people see, see, when people see the, 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 the revelation start to come out of you, that's what you suffered for. See, when people, see, a lot of times people hear me preach and they be thinking, oh boy, you just, man, I ain't got no sense. I don't know nothing. I had to learn that in order to get some knowledge. See, matter of fact, oh, I'm going to bless y'all. Matter of fact, see, Paul said it like this. Everything I gained in the world, I counted it as dung. See, all of that slick, smart way I was, all of that old crafty uh, 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 being slick to women, all, that, all that old way to talk you out of some kind men ways, I had to die to that to get some real knowledge. Now, see, the reason why I don't listen to people because they talking, but they using that old man. They talking scripture out of the power of the old man. They trying to convince me with their head knowledge. But I don't, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. But I don't sense the power of God. Why? Because the power of God means I've had to give up some things. I've had to suffer through some things. In order, because why? Because he trades me. See, nobody will ever have great revelation. Great revelation of truth. If they never give up anything. Because, listen, y'all, great revelation is a trade. God literally, y'all want me to show you? I'm going to bless y'all now. Remember, Paul was talking about he got caught up in this trance, right? Paul said, I went up to the third heaven, and I looked over and saw all of these, these, these great things in the third heaven. He said, I can't even tell y'all. It, so, it was so beautiful. I couldn't express it with words. Right after Paul said that, he said, and an agent of Satan has came to buffet me. I've got a thorn in my flesh because of the measure of revelation. He said, God going to balance me out. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. That the greater, the greater the knowledge I get, the greater the suffering I need to get so I don't become no God. So I don't draw men to me, but I... but I draw him to the one that gave me the wisdom. And that's why I tell people, if you ain't never been through nothing, it's hard to understand a spiritual man because he ain't doing it for the fame. He ain't even trying to cut you because he's trying to show you how tough he is. He's trying to get you to get on this journey to get you some glory in your life instead of running from when people try to deal with you because you ain't realizing it's God. It's God poking on your attitude. It's God poking on your rebellion. But you don't know that because you ain't been around him long enough and you ain't discerned the ways of God. Because you've been taught it's all about blessing. But the Bible talks about this other side of Christ, which is that suffering side. Y'all ready? That side, you don't always get what you want. That's the side where he says no. Say amen. That's the other side. No, see, no notice. Don't nobody want to talk about that side. Let me show y'all this. Oh, I got, I got to close. This side is so secretive almost that Jesus had to go through this alone. When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane by himself, he had to go by himself alone. He had the cup, and this cup was symbolic of the suffering he was going to have to go through to redeem us. He couldn't go through that in front of people. It was, it, it was that backside of the desert situation. Say amen. And the Bible says that he at least thought, he, because he, he could foresee what he's going to have to suffer, that he started praying as blood started coming out of him. Because he was praying so hard about this, this, this cup that he was going to have to drink. This suffering he was going to have to endure. Say amen. So he starts saying, listen, remember, nobody saw that. Peter, James, and John, where were they at? Sleep. 
even the people that was walking with him was sleep. See, y'all so scared to be alone with God that you feel you, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. You want to know God for real? Oh, cut off everybody and get alone with God. Go sit under a tree with the word of God and say, dissect me. And, and he'll lead you to this cup where you have to see the cost. That's why Jesus said, no man build a house without counting the cost. No man go to war without counting the casualty. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was a cup. See, many of y'all ain't never seen it. Y'all don't know what it is. Because this cup is something we never choose. Come on, you'll never choose this. You'll never choose to go through that. But the cup is, the cup is your, you have to go through the garden to get the destiny. It's the hard places. Matter of fact, a better word is called the dark night of the soul. It's the place where you learn submission to God's will. You learn to shut your mouth. You learn to put, you learn to die for the pride. You let, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. You let God start getting in you for real and dealing with how you really are. The real you surfaces. Come on. Now, Jesus walking on water talk, talking about Peter. Remember, Peter, Satan, get behind me. Uh, he was talking good till the garden of Gethsemane came up. And he's starting to pray, oh, my God, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Because he thought, this is wonderful as long as I'm doing miracles. Long as ain't no sacrifice. But God led him to sacrifice. For all of y'all who don't believe God going to take you through nothing, he leads you to sacrifice. The story of the Garden of Gethsemane is symbolic of the story of Abraham. When Abraham was skipping because he got Isaac. Oh, he was happy about Isaac. And then God said, I need him. Bring him on up to the mountain, Abraham. Sacrifice him. And Abraham couldn't do it. Well, he, he was obeying, but it was hard for him. Why? Because, oh, you mean to tell me you bless me so I could sacrifice? You bless me so I could sacrifice. So every time you give me something, you ask for something. Now, did God want Isaac? No. He wanted obedience. He wanted him to obey. When Abraham was willing to do it, he said, oh, you ain't got to kill him. Because you, I know you would obey me. Because you was willing, willing. You were yielding. So he learned obedience. All right, come on, y'all. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Christ had to drink of this cup, that's when he, all heaven and hell, showed up to fight him from doing the will of God. And many of you, all I'm telling y'all, I promise y'all, many of you have, have never understood and never gone through that your own garden of Gethsemane, that dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul, is, it's not the place where you all at. It ain't the place where your gifts are showing. It's the place where you see you for real. The real you. The liar you. The honry you. The lust for you. The pornography you. The perverted you. That's the real dark night of the soul. And you have to see yourself. Listen, y'all. Now, what happens when I don't understand? What happens when I find myself? Listen, here we go. I got a clue. I'm going right here. What happens when I find myself in a place and I wasn't prepared for the suffering? Listen, what happens when I find myself in a place but I wasn't prepared for suffering because, you know, I wasn't taught you to go through nothing? Then you think, listen, then you think what God is doing to perfect you is Satan. So you run from Satan, you run from what you think is the devil, and you run into the devil because he's doing you like he did Jesus. He said, you know, I got a quicker way to be glorified. If you make these stones bread, oh, you ain't got to go through nothing. If you bow down and worship me, Christ, I can give you the whole world. You ain't got to go through nothing. Say amen. If you, if you throw yourself off of this roof, remember he's going to give his angel charge over thee. If you just listen to me. So we're running from God to Satan because Satan makes, make, Satan makes running from God look easy. Oh, y'all heard me. 
When see, oh, I, I'm I'm done. I man, I feel the revelation. When Jonah, when God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, Nineveh and preach, Jonah ran and got on the ship, and he went to sleep because it was real easy running to get on that ship until the season changes, and God is saying, "I told you to do what I told you to do." The Bible says, "The way of the transgressor is hard." Say, man. The only thing I liked about Jonah is that when the sea got the troubling and the men knew that somebody done sinned on the boat, and these were heathens, they, figured, they told everybody, call on your God. They knew somebody done something. Jonah said, that's the only thing I liked about him. I did it. I did it. I know this trouble is from God. I'm making my family suffer because I won't go through it. My children are suffering because I... Because I won't go through it. The trouble is from God. And everybody that, when I get on other people's ship, the ship starts sinking. Because God's after me, and everybody getting tied up with me goes down with me. Their finances go down with me. Their life goes down with me. Oh, y'all heard what I'm saying. Because God's after me. And I ain't figured out that this suffering part of his will so I run away I run away from the I run away from people squaring me up I run away from people having to tell me about me I make an excuse that why are you saying that about me I may I get spiritual you know Jonah got spiritual about it I get spiritual because you know I know God too oh there we go God speak to me too but you don't know the God that's speaking to you want you to go through this hard place but you don't hear God in them hard places so you heard God say go on over this church over here. go over here where they you can sit in the back fold your hands close your eyes and never be challenged or you can stand there and let that man of God square you up take that word and gut you like a fish till all the poison and the bitterness come out so the glory of God can come upon your life and you can shine for Christ. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all hearing what I'm saying. God, let me, I, I got to close. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Let me, let me, can I give y'all one more thing? Let me give you one more thing. I'm done. Are y'all there? Now, 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 this, this one more point I got to get out for before I close. Come on, say, don't be Jonah. Amen. Don't be Jonah. Amen. Stay in the hard place. The greatest person in your life was the one that was willing to tell you the truth. The one that was willing to not to compromise, but say, you know what, I don't care if you don't like me no more. But I'm going to deal with you. Because I see your pattern. And I see your cycle. And if I don't deal with you, you're going to repeat this cycle in another year. And you're going to leave another trail of tears. So I got to dip. Y'all ain't hearing me. That's the man that you love the most. You don't love him now, but boy, when you get to heaven, you're going to love him. You're going to love that man that dared to tell you the truth. Amen. Say amen. That's why I tell, I tell them, what, what could you give for an anointed vessel? What you give for somebody who just tell you the truth? My God. What could you give with all these jelly backspinless preachers that won't tell you the truth? Because they want your little tithes and your little offering. I'd rather let you leave here with this, with this sword of the spirit sticking out your back. And keep your two dollars in your pocket. And leave here with the word of God. Bothering you like it was bothering Joan. The word of God waking you up at night. Making you pace your floor. Because God is dealing with you. Say amen. Oh my, come on son. Hallelujah. I can't go. Stand on your feet. I jumped off. I feel it on me. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing I've always asked for, God deal with me. I never thought I was too, too good. I always said, God deal with me. When me and a God squared me up, I used to thank God. Because I said, you love me enough not to leave me, not to let me deceive myself and think I'm something that I'm not. Deal with me. Because it was my way, it was my pride that was closing doors in my face. It was my pride that was robbing me of my money. It was my pride that was making me mess up my relationships. 
So when the man of God came to me and said, the Lord told me to tell you, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Oh, yeah, what the Lord tell you? Tell me. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Because I know the Lord going to tell you something good about me. The Lord said, put away cunning craftiness. You a slick con man. You a con. I was standing at the altar. Everybody heard it. My pride was hurt. And the Lord said, swallow it. Swallow it. Now don't you get mad. Swallow it. And I swallowed it. And the Lord said, it's medicine. It's bitter on the tongue, but it's going to be sweet when it get in your spirit. And I began to, and after that, the Holy Spirit started showing me my little crafty ways, my little ghetto ways, my little get over mentality. And he started he start letting the fire begin to purge me. The revelation of God started to burn in my heart. And it burned up my wickedness. Say amen. So that's why I never ran from men of God. I never ran from a tough word. I'd rather be embarrassed than to leave deceived. I'd rather you embarrass me than for me to leave out the way I came. Say amen. Come on, play, son. Lift your hands to the Lord. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Oh, we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God that would deal with us. Lord, it's your anointing that we're after. We're going through the hell because we, we want the power of God to show up when we need it to show up. In the midnight hour, we want to sense you near. When we open our mouth to talk about your goodness, we want that power to come out, Lord God. We want to, be, we want to shine for you to be the light you called us to be. We're not going to have all to call. You can pray right where you are. I want you to repeat something after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for running from you, from your ways. You said in your word, your ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't understand how you do things, but my job is to yield to you so I yield tonight have your way whatever you want to do whatever you need to move do surgery on me cut out whatever need to be cut out rearrange whatever needs to be rearranged make me over again into a new image that gives you glory and honor in Jesus mighty name come on in Jesus mighty name Give God some praise.